Here we have a worksheet on totem poles, which were created by our First Nations people along the west coast of Canada. So our Haida, Kwakudu, Coast Salish people all created totem poles carved out of trees. On a totem pole, the bottom figure is the most important, and sometimes we'll see the face of the carver put into the bottom of the totem pole as well. This totem pole does not have the face of the carver. Totem poles are red from the bottom up to the top. The animals carved represent the tribe or clan's history, ancestry, mythology, that's their stories, their rights and their privileges of the family who put the totem pole up. There are usually four different types of totem poles. There's a crest or history totem pole, There's a storytelling totem pole. There used to be mortuary totem poles that would have a box on the top for holding the body of the dead person that the totem pole was honoring, say a chief, for example. And there for example. And there are totem poles that have usually a short or very skinny door carved into the bottom, and those were placed in front of the longhouse. The reason for the short or skinny door was so that if somebody attacked the longhouse, they had to go in, usually sideways or bending over, and one person at a time. A whole army or tribe couldn't just enter the longhouse all of a sudden, all at once. So it protected the entry of the uh, longhouse. Totem Totem poles, of course, are made out of wood, so they only last for about a hundred or so years before the weather starts to cause them to rot. Different groups used different colors, so the Bella Coola people might have used lots of bright colors and lots of paint, whereas Haida's, they did not use a lot of paint and they often were known for the three watchmen being at the top of the totem pole. Kwakudal people used lots of paint, and often they had a thunderbird at the top of their pole. Nutka people created both tall and small poles, and the Salish people created small figures as well as totem poles. The, the Tlingit used reds and pastel colors in their totem poles, and the Simshian created very tall totem poles. So it depended a lot on the people that were creating them. Sometimes the colors meant different directions. Red might be used for south, or blue and green for west, or yellow for north, or white for east. But the colors also represented different things. This is an example of a mortuary pool where the box at the top may have held the body of a chief who had died. And this most likely is a representation of a Haida pole because we can see the colors in it are really just blacks and reds with a bit of white and lots of wood still left with no paint on it. So our totem pole worksheet here has two parts to it, labeling and coloring. Let's do the labeling first that shows some of the characters that are on the totem pole. So here at the bottom of the totem pole, we have a wolf pup. So a wolf pup. Wolf pup means it's a baby wolf, right? Wolf pup. And above the wolf pup, we have the wolf, probably the mother wolf. This totem pole may have belonged to somebody who's part of the wolf clan in their tribe. I do see a frog here as well. Some more characters that might represent things like bears or other birds. But way up at the top here, we have a frog. So we're going to fill in these dotted letters for frog. And at the very top up here, we have a very popular bird, 
in the First Nations storytelling. This is the raven up here. Raven often had magic and told stories. At the, At the very top of this Haida pole are the three watchmen, and that's exactly what their job was to do. These carvings were like watchmen that looked out either down the beach that way or down the beach that way or out towards the ocean to see if there was any other tribes coming to attack. So they were watch So they were watchmen for the safety. There are some colors that we could say have already been done, such as the black in here. And black actually represents strength. So to be strong, you would have black colored in in your story. Lots of black, often used for eyebrows and eyes, right? Black. If we had a color like blue, blue often represents water or happiness. So if I put some blue into this totem pole, I might be representing happiness. use the color green, well it could be to represent something like a frog, like here, but the color green also represented earth, the First Nations people's connection to earth. Purple was used it could represent reverence. A color like purple, not used by very many tribes, but it could represent reverence. And today a lot of the modern First Nations people will add a lot more colors to their totem poles that weren't as commonly thought of. Colors often came from nature, so green might come from moss that's boiled up, blue might come from blueberries, purples and reds might come from berries, black might come from burnt wood, ash, of course, the browns were left from the wood itself. Yellow could be taken from plants as well. The color red is often a very important color, and we see it in many parts of totem poles, especially in Haida poles that tend to just use red and black. And red can be used to represent the tongue, of course, and the lips, can also be used to represent blood, but red is often thought of the color as bravery. Tongue right here getting colored red. Here's some lips that will color red. White, which often is used as well, can be used to represent the sky or peace or purity. Yellow is often used to represent the sun or light. Don't have any sun here, but we can use yellow in different areas, like maybe the beak of our raven. And we can say that there's lots of parts of the totem pole that don't have any paint on it, 
So we're just going to color it in a brown like the color of the wood that the tree is from. Totem pole representing the wolf pup, the wolf, frog, raven, and watchman. A story that would be told from the bottom up. The taller the hat on the watchman, the more important that chief for that particular tribe is.